Hi friends and welcome back to the Control Engineering Geek. In this video we are going to learn how to model heat exchangers. Let's jump into it. So what's heat exchanger? As we know, heat, heat exchanger is a device that used to transfer, uh, transfer heat from a hot source to some working fluid. In this video, our heat exchanger it has double pipe with counter flow our heat exchanger using liquid on both sides and our heat exchanger will have bypass uh, on both cold and hot streams as you can see here this is a bypass on the bypass valve on the uh, hot stream and bypass on the cold stream what what uh, uh, bypass valve is doing is that it will bypass some of the liquid uh, that coming into the heat exchanger uh, to bypass the heat exchanger and be mixed with the output okay okay for the assumptions uh, regarding the modeling of the system we have seven assumptions starting with the first assumption where we are using water as a working fluid on both sides this water has a constant density and specific heat capacity that are not changing with the temperature. The water works in a single phase. Uh, heat coefficients or uh, a uh, heat coefficients of the heat transfer is constant and doesn't change with the flow. For the walls that the heat exchanger are made from, the properties of these walls do not change with the temperature. Uh, the heat is being transferred from the hot stream to the cold stream without any axial heat conditions and finally we don't have any radiation and any loss in the heat exchanger as we assume that the, our heat exchanger is perfectly insulated let's jump into the modeling for modeling any thermal system we are usually using energy balance which states that the rate of energy being stored by the system equals the rate of energy coming into the system minus the energy lost by the system plus any other source of energy whether it's energy generated or work done on the system let's use this uh, this relationship for our system uh, first we need to have some control volume so we're assuming we have control volume which is uh, basically the pipe inside the heat exchanger as a control volume whether it's the hot or the cold water so uh, for the rate of energy stored with the system this has to work with the temperature change with time so we have temperature change with time this has this quantity has to be changed into some uh, energy unit so we have to multiply it by the volume of the uh, fluid the density of the fluid and the heat capacity of the fluid the T, uh, TIO is this value here it is the temperature that coming out from the, temp uh, the heat exchanger for the corresponding stream we have the cold and the water the hot this is the temperature before the mixing before the mixing for the second term heat flow rate into the, uh, the system this has to work with the flow rate of the system and the temperature difference so we expect to have mass flow rate as well as uh, temperature difference this is multiplied by the capacity whereas the Q is the flow rate of the, that, uh, that stream and Tn is the temperature of the stream uh, as it entering the system for the second pa third part uh, we have heat flow rate out of the system or lost by the system this is usually worked with the conduction and convection so we expect it to have a coefficient of uh, heat transfer some area and some temperature difference so the area is the heat transfer area u is the overall heat transfer coefficients whereas the delta tm is the mean temperature difference for the last two terms which are the uh, heat or the energy that being added to the system whether it's heat generated by the system or work done on the system we don't have these two items in heat exchangers so we basically or simply just ignore them using these three 
uh, relationships here uh, for the cold water we are expecting to gain uh, heat so this is the heat that's being lost by the hot stream we are gaining those uh, for the cold stream for the hot stream we are expecting to losing heat so this is the amount of heat being lost which is being gained by the uh, cold water we need to uh, know how to model the temperature difference uh, it's uh, very easy to use the log mean temperature difference method LMTD which can be seen in any uh, heat transfer introductory textbook so basically we need to know uh, what kind of flow we are using we assumed in the first uh, few slides that we are using counter flow so for the counter flow the expression for the uh, for the log mean temperature difference is given in this term here Whereas for the counter flow, we need to know the delta T1 and delta T2. For delta T1 is the difference between the hot flow uh, temperature and the cold flow temperature. Whereas for the delta T2, it's the difference between the cold fluid uh, temperature and the hot, uh, the, the coming in and the going out hot stream temperature. So if we apply this uh, relations, we uh, need to know we need to know some control volume again so uh, we just assume that we have this control volume which is before the mixing uh, using the delta t1 delta t2 as i explained it here we have this expression for the mean temperature difference to model the bypass dynamic the dynamic of the mixing here and here uh, we also using mixed energy balance but we are using on the bypass uh, point on the mixing point which are these two points here these two points can be represented by this term here where we have two flow in and one flow out uh, the flow flows that are coming into this junction point or the uh, summing point here uh, will have temperature and flow rate so for the temperature the T out is the temperature that coming out from the heat exchanger and the T in is the temperature that are bypassed by the valve. So we can write uh, the energy uh, mixing energy balance. We have the energy of the output stream plus, which equals to the energy of the mixing uh, streams. Since we assumed we have a constant heat capacity, so we can relate the energy on both sides to the temperature of the corresponding temperature. So we can uh, uh, assume, uh, substitute this theorem into this relation. We eventually will have uh, the theorem in, uh, in the, the relationship in terms of the corresponding temperatures. We also assume that the density is constant. So we are not going to deal with the mass flow rate. We are basically going to deal with the uh, volumetric uh, flow rate. As we can see here so we not, now need to know the the uh, relationship between the these flow rates here in terms of the fraction of the bypass so if we assume that we have bypass bypass uh, bypass fraction of xi uh, this bypass fraction will have a value between 0 and 1 so basically it describes uh, how much flow is going to be bypassed so if xi whether it's x hot or x cold is zero so i'm uh, just entering all the fluid inside the heat exchanger whereas when the bypass value is one so i'm just uh, bypassing all the amount of the flow uh, to the output without entering any flow into the heat exchanger using this fraction or this uh, bypass fraction we can uh, find the corresponding flow rate for the flow rate that coming into the system whether it's cold or hot the flow rate that's coming after the bypass so we can just take the residual of that that fraction multiply by some quantity here q out q sub uh, o where q sub o is the maximum flow rate that that uh, uh, that stream can provide 
For the bypass flow, the amount of pass flow here or here on these two lines, uh, we can have this term here. So substituting these two uh, relationship in the last one we saw in the last uh, the previous slide, uh, we can have the following relationship in term of the flow rate and the temperature, or basically between the temperature and by the by uh, fraction bypass fraction. So T out equals to by the residual by fraction multiplied by the T out that coming from the uh, system multiplied by the fraction of the bypass uh, by, uh, 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 plus the by fraction bypass multiplied by the stream uh, originally temperature. So in sum, we can say with, with the heat exchanger dynamic model is given by these differential equations here where we have a single differential equation that describes the heat dynamic in the cold stream the same we have on the hot stream if we have bypass on both streams this is the output and we have the delta tm this dynamic is fully nonlinear the nonlinearity comes uh, the nonlinearity come from comes from two sources the first source is the logarithm uh, mean of the temperature difference we saw earlier and the direct uh, multiplication between the control action which is the fraction of the bypass valve uh, with the multiplied by the state so you can st see that there is a direct multiplication between the control action and the state uh, as well as the state is appearing in a fully nonlinear relationship in the delta tm this part of nonlinearity here can be ignored or can be replaced by a hypothesis in literature that says heat exchangers can be uh, modeled using n connecting tanks. So we have number of tanks. So you divide the internal part of the heat exchanger to some internal, uh, some uh, connected tanks and deal with each tanks. Uh, as a single heat exchanger so uh, we will have the same relationship we uh, derived earlier for the cold and the hot part the only difference here is that the delta tm now is just a simple arithmetic average between the delta t1 and delta t2 field so we are not using the log here this uh, simplifies uh, the, uh, uh, the dynamic uh, significantly as we are going to have only one source of uh, uh, nonlinearity, which is the direct multiplication between the control input and the state. Usually, it is assumed that the tanks uh, are of same size, uh, are in have uh, having the same size or equal size. What I have seen in the literature is that using uh, four tanks. Uh, can be very enough to represent a single heat exchanger. However, using four tanks with each tank having two differential equations, so eventually we have to deal with eight differential equations, nonlinear differential equations. To handle this, I just uh, provide you with this simple uh, MATLAB code uh, function. Okay, so we have a function. This function computes the TC out. So whether it's, there is a bypass or not, uh, no bypass, uh, the TC out, which is the cold temperature uh, of cold stream temperature and the hot stream temperature, and the it also gives the initial condition at that integration uh, duration. Uh, we it, it, the function needs the bypass fraction the temperature ends of both streams uh, along with the flow rates, capacitor, uh, heat capacity, uh, density, uh, the volume of the system uh, along with the temperature, uh, the time span that being be integrated over initial conditions and it needs all these properties. These two uh, variables here uh, is just telling the function that we, whether we have bypass on the cold or on the hot stream. The function starts with some computations uh, and the computation of the uh, bypass flow rate P1 
before and after the bypass as i uh, as we saw earlier okay so if we have bypass on the cold stream for for instance the the amount of heat uh, the amount of load that comes into the heat exchanger is given by this format here uh if we don't have bypass it's just the total amount of the uh, flow is being just by uh, entering the system same for the uh, hot stream this portion of the function is computing the differential equations or integrating the differential equations here we have tank one two three four as i mentioned earlier we use four tanks for uh, simulating a single heat exchanger and we have eight differential equations you can see we have eight states uh, from x1 to x8 okay and for the output also if we have a bypass we just use this output if we don't have bypass it just just uh, the uh, heat temperature that coming from the integration i hope this was useful for you guys thank you